Hello, my name is Mac Fishman, and you're listening to the MTI Podcast. Today is going to be a solo episode with just myself, and we are going to talk about Susical the Musical. There's been a lot of buzz around the MTI right now about how we had to replace Fiddler on the Roof with Susical the Musical. I'll start off by saying that we did not intend to have to replace Fiddler on the Roof. But there is a national tour that is living in limbo right now about whether they're going to open back up or cancel the rest of the tour. And when a show is on tour like that, if they have a special contract with a licensing company, they can control who gets a license and who doesn't. And this time, Fiddler is just not working out. But we will do Fiddler on the Roof in the future when it becomes available again. Just like Les Mis, we'll do that in the future when it becomes available again. So actors, you were planning on auditioning for Fiddler on the Roof, but now Susical the Musical has taken its spot. You also might be an actor in a company who was not interested in Fiddler on the Roof, but now you're interested in auditioning for Susical because it is now in that time slot. My main purpose of this podcast is just wanting to go through the characters and the plot of Susical the Musical to help you guys decide what roles you might want to go for. The story of Seussical the Musical revolves around two Dr. Seuss books. Horton Hears a Who, and Horton Sits on the A. And then the authors took as many of the other Seuss books as they could and tried to weave them into the material of the show. So Horton hears a dust speck speaking, and he finds out there are tiny people on that dust speck called Who's. And he puts the Who's on a clover and carries it around. And if you're familiar with Horton Hears a Who, you know that the other jungle animals treat him very poorly because of this. They don't believe that there's anyone on the dust speck because it cannot be seen. So the moral of that story is believe in things that you cannot see or a person is a person no matter how small, to quote. So Horton ends up finding Maisie LaBird sitting on an egg and she kind of tricks him into sitting on the egg for her and she flies away for quite some time. And that's the the central story of Seussical the Musical. The other Dr. Seuss characters play cameos or slightly bigger supporting characters in the show, with the exception of the Cat in the Hat. The Cat in the Hat, I wouldn't call him a narrator of the show, he is more of an MC. He keeps the show running. He can see the audience. He sees things on the outside and the inside of the story, which uh, makes for a really fun character. Whereas the bird girls are the narrators of the show. So now that I've covered some of the story of what Susical the Musical is really about, I thought that I would go through the character list and talk about the different roles and kind of how they play into the show. The first character on our list is Horton the Elephant. Horton the Elephant. Horton the Elephant. I've already told you a little bit about how the story revolves around him, but what's written is our story's main character. He is a compassionate and gentle elephant, commonly misunderstood because of his large size. He is protective and loving of all creatures in the jungle. This role is normally cast between the ages of 20 and 55. It is a baritone tenor role. Not too high, but definitely not very many low notes. I would say it's really kind of like a second tenor. The next role on my list is the Cat in the Hat. Now, the Cat in the Hat is traditionally played by a man, but it has famously been played by Rosie O'Donnell and Kathy Rigby on Broadway. This will be our fourth time producing Susical the Musical, and every time previously, we have cast a male Cat in the Hat. And when we saw it on national tour in 2003, it also had a male Cat in the Hat. But we are leaving it open for women to audition, but we are not bound to casting either a woman or a man. The next character I'm going to talk about is Jojo. Now, Jojo is just an ordinary child who gets pulled into the story by the cat in the hat, and he becomes the mayor's son or daughter. 
He or she is a who that is always finding trouble. He or she should be bright, creative, and inadvertently mischievous while possessing a wild and expansive imagination and find solace in his friendship with Horton the Elephant. We have cast this role as male and female. It's about half and half. I played JoJo in 2005, and then the next time that we did it, there was a boy and a girl that shared the role. And then the last time that we did the show, it was two girls who shared the role. It does cause some lyric changing when you switch it from being a boy to a girl, but it has worked in the past, and we would be willing to do that again. As far as age range for JoJo, we're looking for someone between 10 and 13 years old. The next character that I'm going to talk about is Gertrude McFuzz. Now, Gertrude McFuzz is a female character. The age range is somewhere between 18 years old and 35, a very wide range right there. Uh, it's a mezzo-soprano role. Some head voice, definitely. What it says about Gertrude McFuzz is she is Horton's one-feathered tail bird neighbor. Gertrude is sweet and timid, though kind and loyal. She is also self-conscious about her shortfalls. Throughout the story, Gertrude takes it upon herself to go to a doctor and get prescribed pills to make her tail grow, but then she has to live with the consequences. She is also very affectionate towards Horton the Elephant. Now, Maisie LaBird is the next character I'm going to talk about, and she ties right in with Gertrude. So, Gertrude goes to Maisie, or Maisie actually comes to Gertrude, I guess you could say, and brags about how she got her tail to be so large, and that was by going and seeing Dr. Drake. Maisie is the bird who abandons her egg on the nest and tricks Horton into sitting on it. Maisie is described as the most beautiful bird in all of the jungle, obvious to her self-centered ways. She relies on her talents of manipulation and intoxicating beauty to navigate her way through life. So this is obviously a female role. The age range will be from about 18 to about 45. I really enjoy the music that Maisie sings. She has a song called Amazing Maisie. This next role I'm going to talk about is really a great opportunity for a female who loves to belt. Hans! Hans the voice! Twas the sour kangaroo! Yes, I'm talking about the sour kangaroo. Now, the sour kangaroo is described as the leader of the jungle. She is loud and brassy and stubbornly set in her ways. She is a caring mother but she is very sassy and soulful. She sings the song Biggest Blame Fool. That is what I recommend that you sing if you are interested in being the Sour Kangaroo. She also has several pop-out solos in other songs throughout the musical. She's there in the beginning, the middle, and the end. It's a great role, and I definitely think you should look into it if you enjoy belting. Uh, it says that the age range is set from 14 to 45. Uh, I bet we would go a little bit older than 45. Five. Next up, we have the mayor of Whoville and his wife, Mrs. Mayor. Now, they are the parents of JoJo, and they are communicating with Horton in the song Here on Who. Both the mayor and Mrs. Mayor sing and have to be larger-than-life actors. They are on the clover, on the dust speck, communicating to Horton about how small their world is, but it takes giant movement and great actors. Also, the mayor and Mrs. Mayor have to be able to sing in harmony with each other. We are looking for people who have experience in singing harmonies. The age range for the mayor and Mrs. Mayor are 25 years old and older. The next character on my list is Gen General Genghis Khan Schmitz. He is the general of the Who Army, and he tries to whip Jojo into shape when Mayor and Mrs. Mayor send Jojo off to military school. This character is based off of the book The Butter Battle. We are looking for an over-the-top male actor with a deep voice. If you are interested in auditioning for this character, I would highly recommend singing the song the military. 
Next up on the docket, we have the Wickersham Brothers. So the Wickersham Brothers are described as three mischievous monkeys that steal the clover from Horton. They are the backup singers for the Sour Kangaroo as well. These three guys need to sing in three-part harmony. We're looking for changed voices. Monkeys are biggest thing for in the jungle of New And monkeys like us should know We've been out on a limb looking down on him He's fat, dumb, he's slow Ooh, Elephants and twos with as a rule But he's the biggest blame fool in the jungle of New Up next we have the Bird Girls. The Bird Girls are described as a Greek chorus who are Maisie's friends. They act as the narrators when the cat in the hat is not around. So they do a lot of the storytelling, but they do it while singing in three-part harmony. I'm going to give an example of that. So gently and using the greatest of care The elephant stretched his way strong through the air So as you heard... They sing in this awesome three-part harmony. So we're looking for a minimum of three bird girls, but we can go up to six. The last named character I'm going to talk about tonight is Yertle the Turtle. Yertle the Turtle is the judge in the trial case of the people versus Horton the Elephant. And he sings very, very low. This has to be played by a man and it has to be a bass. I'm going to give an example of how low your little turtle sings. Remanded to the null asylum for the criminally insane. And as for the dust bag, this show is a gold mine for pop out opportunities for the ensemble members. There are singing solos, there are all the circus acts, the circus McGurkis, there's the Grinch, there is the marching band in Whoville, there's all of the Who's, Vlad Vladikov. This is absolutely a show that an entire family could participate together in. With that, I'm going to conclude today's podcast. Thank you for listening.